my utmost for his highest. <sighs> Delicious. You know, I know people talk and they presume that maybe I don't mean talk to God like when I say, okay, I talk to God and God talks to me. I mean it. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not discussing some theoretical religious idea. I'm talking about a practical reality that's part of my life that had it not been, I'd be dead. I mean, literally. There are too many circumstances and coincidences that have been obvious that God said don't do or do, and in avoiding of them, I lived. <laughs> I don't know how people could mistake the reality of a personal and living God for a religious idea that you put some faith into thinking that God exists or hoping that he does and never really understanding that he can be as real as you and I see each other, though you may not see him directly, but you will know him and you will hear him and he will speak to you. And it is possible, you know, though it's rare, and maybe not, I don't know if it's rare or not, I can't speak for the universe, but it's rare that he would appear. But he has, and if he has in the past, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can do in the future. So, don't be satisfied necessarily with where you're at thinking that God is so distant and not attainable. Rather, recognize that he's personal and intimate and real and wants to make himself known to you. Any more than that, you know, you're, I would say just keep searching, keep seeking, keep reading your Bible, keep watching devotionals, you know, or evotionals, but keep reading your devotionals and keep spending time with him. Talk to him as though he's there and you'll find out he is there and you will know that. There is no doubt. The great probing from my utmost for highest. You cannot serve the Lord, Joshua 24, 19. Have you the slightest reliance on anything other than God? Is there a remnant of reliance left on any natural virtue or any set of circumstances? <laughs> you wipe that one out when I was younger. Are you relying on yourself in any particular in this new proposition that God has put before you? That is what the probing means. It is quite true to say, I cannot live a holy life, but you can decide to let Jesus Christ make you holy. You cannot serve the Lord, but you can put yourself in the place where God's almighty power will come through you, where God will use you, not you serve God. See the difference? Are you sufficiently right with God to expect him to manifest his wonderful life in you? You see, it's the same way with love. You can't love with your love, you know, or love yourself first and then love others, because that's foolishness. Because you don't have enough love, <laughs> literally. But when he puts, when he pours out upon you his love, it so overwhelms you that it flushes outward or bounces back out to all others, and they feel the love of God from you. It's not you doing it, it's him doing it. Nay, but we will serve the Lord. It is not quite an impulse, but a deliberate commitment. You say, but God had never have called me to this, I am too unworthy. He can't mean me. He doesn't mean you. And the weaker and feebler you are, the better. The one who has something to trust in is the last one to come anywhere near saying, I will serve the Lord. The reason being is because they trust in their own strength and their ability and in some virtue that they think that they have of themselves without God. And the reality is it's God in them which is accomplishing his purposes for himself. We say, if I really could believe, the point is, if I really will believe, no wonder Jesus Christ lays such an emphasis on the sin of unbelief. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. If we really believe that God meant what he said, and what should we be like? Dare I really let God be to me all that he says he will be? There's so much that Literally, I don't know about you, but, you know, I missed out on 
Possibly. Okay, maybe I didn't miss out on it. I've been this way since I got saved, so <laughs> who am I fooling? I can't even say that, you know, I didn't believe this from the beginning. I'm a weirdo. I took God at his word and figured he meant what he said and said what he meant, so he revealed himself to me, spoke to me, and made it pretty easy, you know, and then I suffered like crazy, and thank God I did, or I'd be a real prideful SOB. <laughs> Having said those things, likewise, I still suffered all the same angst and anxieties and sins and failings and fallings and stupidity of anyone else who doesn't know and didn't know. That's why I say I'm the chief of sinners, but the point is, God is real and he wants to show himself mighty on your behalf because Jesus was delighted when he said, Father, I would that they would see the glory that I had with you before creation. And when they went up on the mountaintop, Jesus was thrilled to show his disciples who he was in his glory. And he wants to do that with you, not to feel you full of glory. You know, that's some television program or some teaching that's probably got you all bamboozled. He wants to reveal himself in his glory. That's him, not you. The point being is that when you see things that point to the person, recognize that that's probably off because the person should be pointing to the Lord. That's the way it works. We don't have anything of ours in and of ourselves, but we have all in and of him that lives inside us. It is him and not us. A very key issue there that people, I try to tell them, look, you're schizophrenic, you know, just get used to it. You're possessed by God. That's just, you know, if you want to put it in those terms, be that way. If you don't understand it any other way, then when you see these shows that are demon possessed, then make yourself God possessed. That's all. God will fill you with his Holy Spirit. He's inside working in you. You don't know it yet. Your consciousness is being changed so that you can understand him and uh, hear his voice inside you. And then gradually you'll realize that you're a split dichotomy of two people living inside your body and you'll become, guess what? Schizophrenic Christian. <laughs> it's a bad term, but guess what? Some people understand it better that way. Because I could explain the holiness of the oneness of God and the unity that he causes by way of the manifestation of his spirit created in you that he would cause you to be one with God and God with you and one in the unity of the Godhead. But that's all spiritualized. It's easier to say schizophrenicized. <laughs> or if you were a sci-fi, you could be one. But God just wants to show you himself. And he wants to live with you, in you, in your day today and you're the only one holding up the program so get with it